of course, what I have to ask you about, which is um, all this Matt Gates crap and uh, <laughs> the way you found yourself sort of in in a part of it um, as almost a character witness, if you will. <laughs> Um, oh my god right right to to attest to some of the creepy factors so of course for those who have uh, not been paying attention to pretty much the best story of the year matt gates is under investigation currently for uh sex trafficking of a minor uh and his association with a convicted sex trafficker joel greenberg who is also a former tax collector who was rife with fraud would do things like pull people people over in their cars and pretend to be like a sheriff and you know all kinds of crap um and would apparently set mr matt gates up with uh young women to sleep with and you had a little part in this as a character witness because there was a particular voicemail that joel greenberg and matt gates left for you that was um Let's just say, uh, uh, I don't know what to say, disturbing. <laughs> and I, I, I want to play it. This is, this, is a, this, is, this is it, everyone. If you guys have not listened to it, you need to. My dear Anna, this is your favorite tax selector. I'm up in Panhandle with your favorite U.S. Congressman, Mr. Gates. Hi, Anna. And uh, we were just chatting about you and talking about your lovely qualities and you're, we think you're the future of the Democratic Party in Florida. Well, see, I know you're the future of it, so there's no thinking involved. Anyway, uh, if you get this and you feel like chatting, give me a shout back. How much cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> How much cocaine? How many beers? Like, this is the saddest call. Anna, what time of day did you receive this call? Do you remember? So this call came in on July 5th of 2019 at around maybe like one or two o'clock. It was in the afternoon and I totally saw my phone ringing and saw that it was Joe Greenberg and I did not pick up <laughs> and I let it go to voicemail. And cause I'm like, why is we're not friends? There's no reason for this man to be calling <laughs> yeah. me. We are not right. friends. We don't have a relationship where you would call me out of the blue. He's and, your favorite uh, tax collector. <laughs> yeah. Don't even, Nate. Don't even. Don't even. <laughs> and, so, and so, yeah, I let it ring and I saw a voicemail and I played it and I was shocked. I mean, I was like, what the hell is this voicemail? And I, I just played it for some of my girlfriends. I played it for some of my interns. But I, I, I honestly, I just wrote it off as like another experience as a woman in politics. I didn't think a lot about it. I just kind of let it be. And then when all this shit started blowing up, I was like, oh my God, they yeah. left me that voicemail. And I actually had to download an app to like go into the hardware of my phone because I, I didn't keep it, right? Like again, I literally, I mean, as a woman in politics, you, you were like, forget, it. delete. Right, you get unsolicited stuff all the time. And so uh, I dug it back up and it definitely demonstrates their friendship. I mean, they were in the panhandle together, right? Which now we're learning, they, they shared women together. I mean super creepy i'm so glad i didn't pick up and and I, and I do hope it helps map out you know the story of everything they've done and i and that's one reason why i wanted to share it yeah no i'm i it, it, a few things obviously it, it definitely does that that they are friends they know each other he can't pull the i have no idea who this is you know the trump thing but then also the way they're sort of treating you as like trying to butter you up, trying right. a little bit of a like girl you up, like what are you doing? Like there's that vibe there that's oh, yeah. so creepy. I don't know, Nate, what did you hear? If you <laughs> I just it's just a typical Democrat with a favorite tax collector. That's all I heard. <laughs> It's, so some folks some folks have called it a booty call. And it definitely kind of felt like and, and when I look back at Joe Greenberg's interactions with me, because just for folks who have context, I represent a district in Orange County. He's in Semo County next door. But we first had an interaction because he made an Islamophobic comment on the Internet, believe it or not. And I, I challenged him on that, as did others. But he targeted me specifically. And I kid you not, he threatened to donate $250,000 with every tweet that I sent. I, mean, I was so arrogant and um, controlling of women. Like it was super gross. So that that's always been a part wait, of wait, wait, wait. This wait, was wait, before. Wait. This is $250,000 per tweet. <laughs> 
are you interested, Nate? <laughs> really? So what did you do? Did you start where you're like, go, go, go? Yeah, exactly. I challenged him on it. And I kid you not, this gets even weirder. So I, I pushed back and I was like, like, no, like I'm not, you're not going to sound to me or intimidate me, Joe Greenberg. And so he DM'd me asking for help because he was being like overloaded with protesters. And so he wanted me to help him out of the hole he had dug. And I was like, seriously, no. dude, like you just, I mean, he is mentally unstable. I think that is pretty clear. Sure. Um, and so long story short, you know, he ended up talking to the protesters and they never really met a compromise, but he continued to try to talk to me. And like you said, Francesca, I do feel like it was grooming is probably to not the best word because grooming we typically assign to experiences of child abuse, right? When a, uh, a predator tries to get young people comfortable with them. But it was, it was, it was that same type of intention to try to get me comfortable with him because I'm sure he and Matt Gates were trying to be flirtatious and trying to, you know, get me to engage with him at a more intimate level, which I absolutely refused to do. But those were always the vibes that I got from him. So when I learned of Damn. all this news, it didn't surprise me because he's always been a creepy guy. Had you yeah. interfaced with Matt Gates before this then? So that gets worse. So I, so it Matt gets Gates, worse. yeah, it gets, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. so, so he left the Florida house before I came in. The one moment I met him was on the house floor. Cause we have organizational session where past lawmakers will come back. And I kid you not on the house floor. He he came up to me and say hi. And he said, my friend, Joe Greenberg talks about you a lot. I mean, it was just so oh, creepy. I know it was on. so creepy. And so, yeah, just like, but again, I, I think the struggle of so many women, especially women in politics space is that these are powerful men, right? I mean, these men, especially when Trump was in office, they were protected by Trump. Yes. Matt Gaetz was protected by his dad, Don Gates, who was another politician as well. Joel Greenberg was protected by his relationship with Matt Gates and other political figures in Seminole County. And so... It is such it's so difficult because you almost feel suffocated to the point where you really you, you don't want to say what you know you should say because of the potential consequences of that, which is one reason why, again, I I wanted to share that voicemail and share what I know, because I want to encourage more women to do the same, because I doubt I'm the only one with a creepy voicemail. Right. And so sure. I want to make sure that we are resetting the norm that it's it's OK to say no, it's OK to push back, it's OK to speak for yourself and not let men uh, uh, control your behavior or, or force you to interact in ways you don't really want to interact. Anna does not intimidate easily. And, um, <laughs> I, I, in any sense of the word, whether it's a creep from Republicans or whether it's, you know, run of the mill Democrats do not doing enough. But I, I guess I want to, my final question on Gates is just, do you think there will be consequences, um, now that Trump isn't, able to protect him and hasn't really stood out for stuck, stuck his neck out? Or do you feel like this endears him somehow to the like dirtbag MAGA folks? Uh, I think it's both right. Y'all like, I, I think, the, <laughs> I think the, the MAGA folks are like, they just see it as a liberal, you know, media attack and whatever. Um, but I don't think he survives this. I mean, I, I think if you remember the day all this news broke, there was he there was a rumor release that he was going to leave Congress and go to Newsmax. Yes. And, I mean, there's no way that wasn't all timed out. Right. Like he's done an investigation for a long time. So and there are so many great journalists out there. Support your local reporters because there are so many journalists out there that are digging deep. Um, they're following the money. And we are learning more and more just almost also about the quid quo pro in the cannabis. And, and Florida has a very regulated cannabis market. Some of us call it the cannabis cartel because it's like these big companies that ha have power over everything. And so they're major contributors to Republicans as well as some Democrats. And so interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, I think more to come and all that. Hey, thanks so much for watching the Vituation Room podcast live stream. And while you're here, why don't you just subscribe to this channel? I promise it'll be good.